Dear brothers and sisters, this meditation is on Mark chapter 4 from verse 1 to chapter 5 verse 20. Have you heard it? The Messiah arrived. Have you heard it? He heals the sick. Have you heard it? He came to establish God's kingdom. Let us go and listen to what he has to say. And so people from all regions came to him, and he went into a boat so that he could teach them all. But then, why is he talking about farming? We would expect him to talk about how he's going to become over Israel and over the world, right? We would expect him to recruit us as his soldiers and to preach revolution. Ah, and he did proclaim these things, actually. But according to God's wisdom, and not ours. So he tells us the parable of the sower. And according to this parable, we are not just bypassing tourists listening to this preacher. No, we are at the core of his mission. We are not just watching what he is doing. Our response matters. What are we doing with these oh-so-precious words? Are we taking them to heart? Are we really listening, feeding ourselves on the words and producing crops, growing in Christ? And these are intense words here, in which at... In this chapter at Mark, chapter 4, we will know how we are not only watching some historical events, but we are part of Jesus' doing at his core, its core. And then Jesus continued explaining how what he came to do is far beyond what people expected from him, and how his kingdom is oh so different from the kingdoms of the world. The kingdom is a seed. A seed? And they think about God's kingdom. When we think about God as our king in his kingdom, we think about a throne and fire and angels and trumpets and singing, right? And Jesus is not saying that's not true, that that's wrong. But he's saying, the kingdom of God I'm announcing here on earth is as small as a seed. And it grows wonderfully beyond understanding into something big. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? People expect Jesus to go to war with the Romans to establish his kingdom. And now Jesus is saying, no, no, no. My kingdom is a very small seed. It's so amazing. In us, in us followers of Jesus, his kingdom is growing. When we worship our Lord Jesus as king, when we love each other, these things so small, in which his kingdom is growing and growing, it's such a big thing. And then Mark moves his attention from Jesus' mission, his kingdom, towards Jesus himself. Who is this man? We read the story about how Jesus is sleeping in the middle of a storm. And the di disciples don't understand it. Doesn't he care if we drown? They were focusing on the storm, the terror, and probably mad with Jesus for slipping through it. What were you doing when I needed you? And so they woke him. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? But he was sleeping, not because he didn't care but because he had nothing to fear. And he spoke two words, and everything was calm. And then he asked his disciples why they were afraid. They were so roused by the storm, and were focusing on the terror, instead of having faith and focusing on Jesus. And it, this is so recognizable, it's so easy to be distracted from Christ when storms hit our lives. And it's good to be reminded by this text, that there is no need to be afraid when we are in the same boat as Jesus. And we read that the disciples were terrified after they saw Jesus calming the storm. And then they asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Good question. Who is he? And it is very soon answered by the least expectable person. As soon as they got out of the boat on the other side of the lake, a man came running towards them. Awful looking, totally mad, wounded, dirty, stinking. And he fell on his knees in front of Jesus and shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? <laughs> the disciples wanted to know who Jesus was. Here's the answer. So now Jesus' kingdom is growing wonderfully in our lives this day. In small things, and he is our king the living one, the son of God, and we don't have to be afraid when storms hit our lives. A lot of life lessons in this passage. 
So let us not look at the storm, but look at Jesus. Focus our attention on him. Let me end with a quote from a song. We'll put a link in the description. You need to let Jesus in the boat. When you're battered by the wind and waves, when you're thinking that you're sinking and you're wanting to float, just remember, Jesus saves. When the storms of life seem to push you around, just remember, you will be safe and sound if you never leave the shore without Jesus in the boat. Amen.